So, okay, so the last one that he sent me, why in a spiritual point of view does one addict talking to another addict seem to calm the ego so much? Now I know this, calm the ego, calm, relax the ego, yeah. deflate the ego. I can say this because I haven't identified the man. Um, I know this person goes to 12 step groups and uh, in the philosophy of the 12 steps uh, is to give service. So I have a, an, you know, I'm a, recovered, I'm a recovered sugar addict. So I help other people who have food addiction in, uh, as a form of service. And we know from that that, uh, let's say, I'm, and this also goes, uh, you know, if you're suffering with lust as well, you know, if I, if I help someone with sex addiction, or if I'm suffering with sugar addiction, if I help someone with sugar addiction, then it's like uh, the, the theme of the 12 steps is someone who's recovered by giving their life to God to stop their food addiction, when they help me, if I'm trying to recover, then they lose their obsession. For food, you know, and it's like they they're granted this grace by God, and we've known this for a long time in the twelve step groups. So there's groups for recovery from alcohol, for recovery from food, recovery from sex and love, recovery from drugs, uh, recovery from uh, gambling, and it's like as soon as and it's a great question because for me it's um, there's a it's an anti karma thing. It's a selfless service, but it's also an anti-karma thing. So, uh, like, I spent, uh, I spent a predominant amount, the first 30 years of my life, with food addiction and, and, uh, and destroying myself with excessive food consumption and feel, filling that emptiness inside by just overeating. And then I went to a 12-step group and I had someone who helped me uh, to recover from that uh, addiction. And then... And then the theme is, once I've recovered, I then find some other people with sugar addiction and food addiction, and I help them. And, that, and I've been free of that sugar addiction for uh, over 10 years now. So, and I do help people. I help people. I have several people I help who suffer from food addiction. So why does that happen? So is there a grace for you or for the other person? Or no, no, it's both, God? both. Yeah, it's like a karmic grace that's granted to both me and the person I help. And he said, what... what why, in a sp spiritual point of view, does one, uh, one suffering addict helping another, uh, s you know, stop the egos? It, uh, I'm, I'm asking, stop, yeah, for both of us, stop, stop us from having, you know, like, I'll, I'll give myself, because, and I get this reprieve from God, because I'm trying to help someone else who's suffering from the food issue, and they stop mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And as long as I continue to help people <coughs> who are suffering, it's like suddenly I don't have any sugar addiction or any food addiction. Okay year after year after year. And for me, it's like a karmic thing. And I also, I share in these groups, it's like, you know, I caused a lot of damage in the world because of my food addiction, you know. And actually, um, and my experience, and my, the benefit I've got, like God takes that away from me, but it's like a great anti-karma thing for me then to be helping others who are suffering the same addiction. Mm. You know, and why not, you know, like for me, like, my main addiction is food addiction, so for me, it, you know, the grace comes, it's, it's, it's kind of obvious to me that I wouldn't be helping people who are alcoholics mm -hmm. as a primary focus or drug addicts as a primary focus because, you know, my karma is I have the grace of, uh, from God from stopping the food addiction and then I'm helping others and then they can help other food addicts. And I would say that, mm -hmm. and the funny thing is I've helped people uh, there was one lady I was helping with a food addiction and, uh, and she said to me, no, it's, it's just about giving service. You know, you it doesn't have to be food service, you know. Uh, and she said, oh, and I said to her, no, I think you should just stay in the program and help other food addicts and while I'm helping you. And he said, no, no, God, God doesn't really mind what type of service you do. And so she said to me, um, I'm going to go to Africa to help the starving kids, she said. So she left me and she went to Africa to help the starving kids. And she said, well, it doesn't really matter. And she relapsed, you know, because it was like, no, there, there, is, a, there is a kind of a karmic thing. Like if I'm dying of food addiction and God gives me the grace and I help another food addict, it's like the karma is done. But if I'm, and also I was trying to help her, but also yeah, I've seen it many times. It doesn't really help. 
if you're if you're suffering from food addiction and you get help from someone with, who's recovered with God, then if you help old ladies across the street, you know, still you have food addiction. You're still suffering oh. from the donut addiction. Oh. So that's a that's a very great question. I think there oh. is a there's a yeah. there's a karmic thing. My life has been from destroying myself with food. So it's like my anti karma, my daily anti karma is to continuously help people who are suffering from food, as opposed to doing um, doing a different thing, especially with 12 steps. I think, um, and with Hawkins did describe, if you become an enlightened teacher, you obviously don't need to do that. But um, uh, at a certain level of spirituality, it is necessary, at certain levels of consciousness. You have to do the specific opposite of what, what your problem was, and then that alleviates the problem. That would be um, for, for both people, as opposed to, so that does work. But it doesn't, that doesn't operate if you're an enlightened teacher, then you don't need to. You don't need to do that.